By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against a Spanish player called Pablo and he's bringing a mono blue deck to the table. And I've actually called it Blue Surprise because he just kept surprising me with what he was playing. Uh, we are playing according to the Atlantic rule set, so that means that you can play with Fallen Empires. And I am bringing my white, green, red mid range deck to the table. Um, I'm about to go start with the deck deck as usual. If you want to go to the game straight away, you can check the timestamp below and then you can go straight to game number one. Pablo's deck, it's difficult to put in a box. I know it's mono blue, it's got a lot of reprints, so it's very budget friendly. Um, it's blue surprise. Some of the cards that I noticed when I was looking back at these games is Ghost Ship, which I think is an interesting card to play. Uh, I, I guess it's not very popular because, of course, you have the Surrender Befreed. You also have the um, the Azure Drake from Legends, which is a 2-4, but then just for one blue and three. Um, I do think it's an interesting option when you're playing mono blue because it does have that four defense, so it's not boldable. It is four mana, so it's only one mana more than the Surrender Befreed, but it's not Arabian Nights. So that means, you know, if there's a city being dropped... Uh, the ghost ship stays on uh, the field and it, I mean it does have regenerate okay you need three blue mana which is pretty steep but still it, it has regeneration it can come in handy and we also see a Simbat so I expect he's playing with a lot of lands and then using a Simbat because he's not playing with any other kind of combo card to to use next to the Simbat so although I guess Conchhorn and Simbat is a little combo that's actually why I put Conchhorn on here as well is Conchhorn I find it very interesting it's just two mana and if you sack it I mean you do get to draw two cards which is kind of nice and it's kind of like I guess a brainstorm in old school magic so you can just put one card back from your hand and when you have a Simbad of course you can put back a land card so that's um, some nice synergy there that's just all about I can really share with you about this this blue surprise deck um, it, when you look at the games, it's very interesting because he keeps coming with cards that I don't um, that I don't expect. So definitely a very cool build here by Pablo. Let's take a look at my deck. I am playing with a white, green, and red mid range deck, or actually I should say white, red, and green mid range, because that's kind of the order of things here. Um, and this, these are just a few cards. I am playing with the infamous Urnum Jin. I am playing with Sarah Angel, so so I have quite some beef. And red is actually only in there for four lightning bolts and a wheel of fortune. So it doesn't have uh, a very strong um, part to play in this deck. But I do find wheel of fortune and lightning bolt so strong that it's worth to splash red in here. I'm, I also have the white control package, the disenchants and the swords. And I also have that little ramp going on with the Lanawar elves for, um, for my green. And I am... Let me think, I am playing with Ice Storms as well, so I have that little trick that you see um, more and more often in Old School where you try to get that turn 2 Ice Storm out uh, with the help of your Lanawar and then continue ramping into your bigger creatures, your Sarah Angels and your Urnum Jins. So it's going to be interesting um, um, to see how it's going to perform against uh, this uh, Mono Blue deck. I, I do always feel that when you're playing multiple colors, yes, the downside is that sometimes you're a bit you know, stuck on, on, on mana, you don't have the right colors and you cannot move forward. But I think having different colors, each color brings an answer to another color and another threat. So just playing with three colors or four colors, it just gives you a lot of answers. It does mean that your deck usually um, you know, becomes less consistent, but you can kind of brew around that as well. I think mana base and old school magic is something that is really, by some people, really underestimated and can really make a difference in, you know, if you're going to end up really well in a tournament or if you're just going to get shut down all the time uh, with your brew. Anyway, enough being said here by, by me. Uh, let's go to game number one and see how this all plays out. Game number one, and it's Pablo who is on the play here. Playing an island, and there I go, into a soul ring. There's a four spike. Nice. It's nice to see these cards because you don't see them often. Well placed four spike here. There's that conch horn that I talked about in the introduction. And there the conch horn 
he can use, he can sack it, it's a um, Fallen Empire's card, Artifact card, he can sack it to draw two cards and then he has to put one card from his hand back on top of his library. And I think that's what we're talking about because I don't see that card that often. Bringing a Mox Pearl and playing a Disenchant here on his Conchhorn. There is another island. Three islands now staring down at me, so that means a lot of counter capability. Still, I'm just playing my Chaos Orb, and I'm lucky it's not getting countered here, so it stays on the pitch. And there's a Surrender Bafrit. 3 4 powerhouse, but I have a lot of answers playing with white. I also have that Chaos Orb, of course. Am I going to flip? I am playing against blue, so I'm not afraid for a disenchant. Ooh, but there's a sword, so I'm not even using it. I am giving my opponent three lives. And now it's, yeah, it's playing a Mishra's Factory. Attacking for one here. So I have some answers. Interesting that he didn't pump his factory, by the way. Oh, maybe he was afraid of this. There is a lightning bolt and of course playing and with lightning bolts and with um swords to plows here there is a book i think that's very important for me having that book having access to some mana what i wanted to say is when you have access to and lightning bolt and swords if you play it the right way it means you can just take out little creatures with your lightning bolt and you can use your swords for the big boys and let's see i'm choosing to draw a card here not finding any mana playing another taiga passing turn and with four mana, at least I can play my Surrendip Jins. Or my Urnum Jins, I mean. And there is the Simbat on the side of Pablo. I'm playing another duel, having five land now. Yes, there she is, Sarah Angel. And this means serious trouble for my opponent here. Using Simbat, finding the Surrendip of Freed, having to discard it now because it's not a land card. Playing Control Magic, nice. Well placed control magic and I decide to use my chaos orb and there we go for the flips I'm flipping on the control magic Trying to get boom and it's a hit. I want to get my angel back and now it's back That's of course a problem with the Control magic against a wide deck with this enchant. in this case also the chaos orb. It's always difficult There's a big chance that your opponent has an answer, but I, I feel it is of course the good play to make here Tapping another five. Will there be another angel here? <laughs> wow, Sir Angel number two. I think this game is uh, is pretty much over. He needs something now. Look at that Simba. Some nice action finding the factory. That's something. Oh, another control magic. That's pretty good, actually. Maybe he's playing with four of these in his deck. It is a strong card. Will there be... Ah, oh, there's a disenchant. That's unlucky. That is unlucky. I can attack him now for four. That's what I'm doing because my Sarah Angel coming back into my control has summoning sickness again. So I cannot attack straight away. At least that's something for Pablo. But I feel he's very unlucky here that I have that very quick answer. Of course. Ooh, another control magic. Wow. I wanted to say, of course, I do have the, the book, the Jadam Tome, so that really helps me to dig for answers. I think that's also a problem here. And look at that, a Timmy on the battlefield. He can use a Timmy to shoot my Lanoer down, drawing another card. Is there a Disenchant? No, no, there's a Sylvan, so even more card selection for me. Now, I've only played one Disenchant so far. And... It looks like I wanted to pass turn, but then, okay, look at that. Another land card found here by Pablo, so that Simbad is bringing some value to the table. I think it's a very, just a very strong card in general. I would love to play it in a blue and black build with anime deaths, for instance. Attacking here with the angel, and I'm actually taking the damage, hoping to find a disenchant next turn. I think it's a very good decision from my opponent Pablo to play aggressively with the angel because as soon as I find a disenchant I have that angel back he doesn't want that to happen he'd rather want to trade the angel for my angel basically taking away two cards with one control magic and there is a swords over my own angel 
It does mean I am using a Swords to Plows here to kill my own creature and giving him... Oh, this is nice! I'm liking this! He's using a Boomerang over his Control Magic. Well played, sir. I like this. Very nice. So that does mean that I gained a life and not Pablo, but I mean, he can now recast his Control Magic, take control of the Sarah Angel, and it's now the last Sarah Angel on the board. That is really nice. That is really nice. Okay, I'm playing, put, just putting some more beef here on, just to keep the pressure on going. The Urnum Jin using his Simbat, finding the Ghost Ship. Ah, that's unfortunate. That could have helped him here. That could have been a, a nice blocker. Let's see what he's going to do now. Of course, recasting his Sarah. Probably he can, if, if I attack with my Urnum, which I probably will do, he can block on the Sarah, use his Timmy to kill my Urnum Jin. Wow, and this, I'm liking the way how this is, how Pablo is keeping staying alive, because I thought he would be dead a long time ago. Drawing an extra card here from my Sylvan, going to 16, finding another factory, attacking here with my 4-5. I would, I would, to be honest, I would block and just ping. But maybe, you know, he wants to keep his Sarah, but there's still the danger of me finding another Disenchant, because I've only played two Disenchants so far. Or one, actually, and he is blocking. So he is blocking, I think that's a good decision. Do I have something in hand? I don't. That means we're going to trade. I'm kind of counting on my book and my Sylvan, to just make sure that I can keep the pressure on the board and that I can find something here. Tapping three, playing an Ice Storm on one of his factories. Playing another Ice Storm. Okay, so taking care of both of his factories. And this is kind of showing the power of land removal in this format. So even if you play land removal later in the game, it's not just a tempo trick. Um, you can also use it to just get rid of those very powerful um, I guess non-mana land, non-basic lands. So, I mean, in this case for your factories, but you also have Maze of Ifs, you have you know, all sorts of non-basic lands that can cause a lot of trouble. Uh, Tabernacle, a card we don't see often, but when you have it against you, you're not happy usually. So, it can solve, land removal can solve a lot of problems. Also late game. So, it looked like I wanted to attack with them. I'm choosing not to. I'm first going to draw a card to see what my options are. Remember, if I attack and he blocks with one Simbat, he can ping it with that Protocol Sorcerer. Actually, I'm not attacking passing turn and he's pinging me end of turn. And I'm playing a Lightning Bolt over Timmy. Oh, I kind of feel bad. I'm sorry. I'm killing Timmy's here. Oh, I'm really sorry. Not good for my karma. Lightning Bolt on the Protocol Sorcerer. Ooh, look at that, a Chaos Orb. Nice. And he's asking me what I have in my graveyard. Probably wants to know how many disenchants I still have. And he's going to flip, so let's put it in slow-mo. And there we go. Boom! It's a hit. It's a hit. It's not, you know, as full-on. But hey, it, it counts. As long as it touches the card, it's a hit. And that means Sylvan Library is history. And this is really my kind of game. I mean, two orb flips. And just going full-on now attacking. And then it is nice that you're playing against blue. You don't have to be afraid of any disenchants or, or anything else. There is a Swords on one of who's trying to double block. I'm using my Swords. And in response, he's using his Simbat twice, which I think, again, is a good decision here. Um, gaining one life, but losing four. So in total, he has to take... Or actually, he had has declared as a blocker, so he's only using uh, losing one life here. He's on seven, but things are now looking, looking bad for Pablo here. Attacking for four, there's at least one Boomerang. So that means he goes to five recasting that uh, Mistress Factory here, drawing another card. I think the book is very decisive in this matchup. It is giving me so many cards already. And attacking again. Look at that. My opponent's on one, and there is a lightning bolt. That's it. That's game. But Pablo, wow, wow, wow. Every inch, every inch of the way. Let's give our players some time to sideboard, and we'll get back to them in game number two. Game number two, and Pablo gets to start here. And I had that uh, first victory 
But uh, I like the way, I mean, Pablo, I really like the way you kept coming back and back and back. I mean, I thought you were, were dead and buried five minutes in the game, but you just kept fighting back. Really nice to see. And there's a Fower Stone from your side. There is a Taiga next to my plateau, tapping two, playing a Sylvan Library. And no counter spell here. Of course, he didn't have any blue mana open because the Felwer can only produce the type of mana that your opponent is playing. And there is that Sinbad again. And I'm going to take an extra card here, going to 16. Playing another plateau, playing a Soul Ring into an Urnum. Well, this is actually what you want to do with this deck. Um, you just want to get ahead of the curve, playing out fatties as fast as possible. Finding an extra island with the Simbat, and I must say the Simbat is doing a lot of good work in this brew. Will we see a control magic now? That would be a good answer, or maybe a ghost ship that he can block and regenerate. Oh, interesting card here. There's a life tap. Another well, another surprise. I mean, you keep surprising me, man. A life tap gives um, a life every time I tap for a green mana. So, I mean, I am playing with Taigas. Attacking first with my 4-5, so he's going to 16 here. Let's see if the life tap can do some work. And of course with the dual land, I can choose it not to produce green mana, but I can choose to make it red or not. How does that work? Can somebody let me know in the comments below? Anyway, he's taking a life. And I guess we're just saying, you know what, when I tap my taiga, because it counts as both a forest and a mountain, I'm also going to give you you're going to gain a life from the life tap. I'm not 100% sure if that is correct. So if there's anybody listening here, some experienced old school player that can explain this to me. And there's a Simbat going again and there's a life tap going away and there's that well needed control magic. What is he going to take? Is he going to go for the four or five or for the flying angel choosing to go for the angel? And now it's going to be interesting when I attack if he chooses to block, but maybe I can find a disenchant before all that happens. And I think, I think there's a disenchant, so I'm getting it back. And we already talked about this um, in, the, uh, in the first game. When you're playing against white, disenchant just isn't as strong. It's still a good card, I would still play it, but you want to try to protect it with a counter spell or maybe a boomerang like we saw Pablo do in that first game. Let's see what he can do. He is kind of in the tank here, trying to find a way to deal with all this pressure that's on the board at the moment against him. And tapping for three here, playing another Timmy, or playing a Timmy, not another one, but playing a Timmy. Very cool, playing a life tap. So that means if I tap my Taiga, he now gets two life. Looking at my cards again, I think, you know, it, it's just, I, I've, I've been in this, these situations as well where you have a Sylvan Library against you. I mean, it's really not making you happy. He's chump blocking now with his Timmy to make sure he doesn't get any more damage. Oh, there's a Sarah Angel. I think, I think this game is pretty much over, but I thought that in game one as well, and he managed to come back. So let's see what's going to happen here. Playing another factory. Tapping for six. Oh, nice. Again, he's surprising me here. Mahamoti Jin main board. Very cool. Oh, I really like the Mahamoti Jin. It's a beautiful creature. Oh, from the sideboard, red elemental blast. Oh, that's bad news. And a bolt to make matters worse. And then I can just kill him. And I mean, this is something when you're playing against a deck with three colors, you just have so many answers also in your sideboard. Um, anyway, uh, thank you very much, Pablo, for these games. Um, and what I've done actually after this, I said, you know what, you're playing a deck mainly with reprints. Um, I have a deck as well. It's a budget green build. Would you like to play another game? And uh, he said, yeah, sure. So. If you're interested, uh, we're now going to look at those games. And so I'm playing with my budget green deck. Here you can see a picture of my budget green deck. My idea is I only want to play with reprints. I don't want to play with any unlimited cards. That's why there are no berserks in this build. Although maybe there should be berserks in this build. Anyway, <laughs> this, is, uh, this is my budget green deck and I'm now going to play with it against uh, Pablo's uh, blue surprise. 
Okay, so here we go for the second match of this video. So it's still blue surprise, but this time it's taking on my green budget build. So I just want to throw out green creatures, old fashioned style. And I have three hurricanes to deal some extra non combat damage. And I also have uh, storm seekers in this brew. And storm seekers are really kind of a way to finish somebody, especially when you're playing against card drawing decks. So usually blue is pretty good at drawing cards. So with the conch horns and also with the, um, the simbats, maybe. I can uh, hurt him a little bit with the Storm Seekers. There is a Forest, and of course I've got a 1-drop because this deck is full of 1-drops, so I'm playing my Lanawar Elves. And maybe I can ramp it up a little bit here. Let's see. My opponent's playing another basic island. And passing turn, so it does mean he can counter now. Although I haven't seen a counter spell in his deck, I wonder if he plays a counter spell. Ah, there's an Asban Ogre. This actually wasn't on the deck picture, so I think the uh, Whirling Dervishes that were uh, on the deck picture, they are now in my sideboard, and I'm playing a Gasban Ogre main board. Hey, there we are. Well, we have the counter spell, so he is playing with counter spells. Look at that, playing two more script sprites. So more and more pressure on the board here. Tapping three here. Oh no, not a Timmy. I think Timmy is the worst possible thing that can happen to me with this brew. Attacking with everything, but the Protocol Sorcerer can start pinging down my entire army. And I'm actually deciding to play Giant Grove to put some more pressure on the table. And I just have to keep playing creatures out and hope that I can kill him before he pings down my entire army, but of course the Protocol Sorcerer is a big problem here. And Pablo plays a Felwer Stone. Oh, a Surrender Pafrit. Things are starting to look very bleak for me here. And he takes care of my Lanawar Elf, which I think is smart because then I don't have 4 mana anymore, so I cannot play an Urnum. Because an Urnum Jin can kind of save me here. Attacking for 3 now. Maybe he's afraid of a giant growth, so that's why he just takes the damage. But there's no giant growth at the moment. Attacking here with the Surrendip, I'm going to 17. Probably killing, yeah, killing the Pixies because they are... Oh no, oh no, Ma Moti Jin, Ma Moti Jin. I think this is going to be a very short game. I mean, he's, he's on 8, but I mean, look at his board presence. He's got all the answers right now. I only have 3 mana and 2 measly script sprites. Now I only have 1 measly script sprite. Ah, just kill me now. Well, I'm not going to die yet. I mean, I have one more turn, I guess. But now he does 10 damage. 10 damage. I'm going to 7. Or maybe I'm going to chump block. Maybe that's the best thing to do because... Okay, I'm just taking the damage. I'm just hoping for some kind of miracle to deal some more damage here. Attacking him, at least pumping a little bit. Ooh, almost there, almost there. That's why this deck needs Berserks, because then he would have been dead. Oh, man. Okay, but I don't have any Berserks, and he's going to kill my last creature, and he's going to kill me. That's what he's going to do. But he's ending up on two lives. So I was so, so close. We're going to go to our sideboards and then I'll see you back at game number two. Game number two. And um, I don't know, for people that kind of follow the channel on a regular basis, you kind of know that as soon as I'm taking a mono green deck, I don't know why, but I hardly ever win. So I really need to look at my brewing... Uh, qualities because I know that Mono Green is actually a pretty strong deck in old school magic these days. Anyway, I've played an Asban Ogre and I'm now playing, um, oh, what's the name again of this card? A 1-1, you can sack it to destroy an artifact. Anyway, um, it's the scary, the scary woman or is it a guy that's holding a hand? And they're using the maze here for my Asban. Playing a Soul Ring, so I'm ramping a lot. And because of that safe haven, I can pump my creature, so deal some extra damage here. He's on 16 now. And that's it. He's not playing anything, so that's good news for me here. Playing another forest. 
And I have so many mana. Can I find some kind of big creature here dealing two more damage? Oh, I wanted to say here's an Urnum, but here's the book. Actually, that's pretty good as well because it can ramp me. Oh, nice. I like this. I like these plays because it really sh uh, slows me down. So because then next turn I could have had an extra card, but now I can because of that boomerang. And there's a pretty nice blocker here. Now remember, it does have summoning sickness still. So if he uses it next turn uh, as a blocker, he cannot pump. Oh no, oh no, oh no. And there's my big enemy again. The prodigal sorcerer, the Timmy. Brilliant card, of course. I'm a big fan. And I can use my safe haven, I guess, to kind of protect my Timmy. Or protect my uh, my one ones. For some reason, I don't attack here, which I think is a mistake. I should have attacked. If he wanted to trade, fine. If he don't want wants to trade, also fine. Playing another Timmy here. Doesn't... Well, he can now take care of my Asban. I really need to attack this time. I am taking an extra card from the book. Interesting choice to play this. Do I have more? He's also pointing at his own Timmy that he can now activate his Timmy to kill my Asban Ogre. I think this is what we call a misplay, Mr. Timmy. No, this, yeah, okay. I can kind of see why I'm doing this. I want to put pressure on, but I don't, I don't think this is a good decision looking at it now. But okay, I've played the Pixies. I can attack with that. Ooh. Oh, 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 this is painful. A Force Spike. I can pay one to cancel the Force Spike. But if I do, it means I don't have my Safe Haven anymore to, to save my creature. So I'm not doing that. I want to keep my Safe Haven. And he's trying to ping it. Go, goes up to three. And I think that now... Pablo has made a mistake or not. I'm not quite sure what's happening here. Let me know in the comments below if you know what's happening here because I can't follow. Anyway, it looks like both of my creatures are dead. And I think I've just made a bunch of bad decisions here. Does that mean that Pablo is going to win this again and he's going to go... He's going to take the second match that we're playing here. And he's playing a Simbad. He can attack now, of course, because of my uh, Concordant Crossroads. I, I, why did I play the Concordant Crossroads? Really? Why did, It's not that complicated. Anyway, um, talking about bad decisions here with that Concordant Crossroad play. But hey, it's here. I have to deal with it. But I'm afraid I cannot deal with it. And uh, tapping a green. Deciding to untap the green again. You can see when I'm in the tank like this, I am, it's not going well. Attacking now. Putting me to 15 with that double ping with the Timmies. Using a Simbat, finding an island. Well done. I am liking the Simbats in this brew. They seem to be doing a lot of good things here for Pablo. Drawing another card. Playing another factory, attacking here, putting me on 12. And that means he, he gets to own my Asban Ogre because my life total is lower than that of Pablo. He's on 13, I'm on 12. And I mean, looking back at this game, it's, uh, it's, that's a, it's a little bit painful for me here because I'm just, I feel I've made a lot of mistakes in that in that turn when I played the uh, the crossroads, but hey, it is what it is. Putting me down here on seven, attacking with the ogre and the surrender perfreed, and it's my go again. Drawing a card here, and there is at least is something to deal. Oh, nice! <laughs> That's why I call it Blue Surprise. I mean, nobody plays with this card. It's from Legends. Uh, help me out if you know the name. You can only use it to counter uh, creatures. Anyway, Pablo, I really like this. I really like this. Showing him my hand. Um, so I am down, and we actually played a third game. So if you want to see the third game, just, uh, just stick around, because we're now going to go to game number three. Game number three. 
And, uh, oh, it looks like Pablo's taking a mulligan here, putting one card on the bottom of Library Soul. I'm, I mean, I've already lost this matchup, but we're just playing the third game here. Um, playing a Pixies and a Simbad. And I kind of asked, you know, Pablo, please, can we play at least one more game? Because that second game was just, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't pretty from my side. He said, sure, sure. Uh, we can play a third one, so thank you for that. Um, he's playing a basic island here, having that Simbat. Ooh, look at, I mean, that Simbat's doing so much work in this brew. There is a Felwer Stone, giving him some ramp capabilities here. Attacking now. He's going to 12 already. But if he can find another Timmy, I'm in trouble. And there is a Control Magic. And he's taking over one of my pixies. And that's very annoying because I'm not playing with white in this deck, so I don't have a disenchant. I actually don't have anything against enchantments in this deck. Well, that's not true. I'm playing with tranquilities. So if I can find a tranquility, that would be nice. Taking care of his Simbet here, and he's putting his own air elemental into the graveyard, losing it, uh, using it one last time. And now my opponent gets to untap with his Pixies. And interesting to see... Oh, that's why I'm not, I haven't used my Safe Haven. Using my Stormbind here. Or, sorry, uh, uh, Stormseeker. But... Ay, 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 a Power Sink. That's unfortunate because he's already pretty low. And now he's probably just going to empty his hand. Ay, 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 ay. Attacking me, going to 18. Playing a forest. Having five here. Just attack, Thomas. Come on. Just attack. Boom. Bring it to two. Thank you. At least doing some action here. Going to six. And again, you know, I have this flashback of me recalling uh, I need to play Berserks in this one. I know why. Because I want to keep it budget. Oh, look at this. Another control magic. Oh my, and there is, okay, at least that's something. An Urnum Gin, which is quite nice because he's already used two control, a third control magic, really? Oh, Jesus Christ. I, if I can just find a Tranquility. No, not a Scripps Sprites, a Tranquility. Oh man, I mean, I mean, I'm getting, I'm getting, I must admit, now I remember when I was playing this game and I'm, I was getting salty. I was getting salty because, I mean, so many control magics. But it can happen. I mean, if I can pull one tranquility. Attacking here. Taking the damage. It's hard to know with what he's attacking. Playing a ghost ship. And now things are just getting worse and worse for me here. Using my safe haven to pump my pixie, I guess. To a 2-3, maybe going to play... Oh, I think I know what I'm going to do here. Playing a hurricane, probably. Look at that, playing a hurricane, but I'm missing one. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's so bad. I'm missing one mana. I'm, oh, I would have pulled a soaring. Oh, no. I could have won this one. Oh, I, okay, I'm now super salty. Okay, I could have won this one. Well, I couldn't, but if I would have... Anyway, that doesn't matter in, in Magic the Gathering. We've, we've all played these games where, you know, sometimes... You know, I have that at tournaments as well that sometimes you just lose your first few games with a deck and then it, it you don't really recover and you keep losing even even when you should be winning it's just one of these things that happens sometimes with magic um anyway thank you for watching another episode of timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic and um yeah these were two matches in one let me know what you think about that i've done it before in another video and i get pretty very positive feedback on that so that's why I decided uh, to do it again it also shows I think the diversity of a deck because sometimes you see a deck losing and then it turns out hey this deck is actually not that bad it just had 
you know, some some misfortune in that first match and the second match it could recover. Um, anyway, thank you for watching this episode. And um, before you go away, um, I just wanted to share with you the end scroll with the Patreons of Timmy Talks. I want to thank all each and every one of them because they are supporting me financially. If you would also like to support me and of course the channel, you can do so by, well, what you've just did, watching my videos, leaving a comment, liking, sharing this content on your socials. And, um, you know, if you if you if you can uh, can miss a dollar, you can always check uh, my Patreon page and you can become a Patreon of the show. So let's now go to the end scroll. Thank you to all my patrons. Ik het als fikker te somber gezien.